Today's coaster review is of Gatekeeper at Cedar Point. This is the B&M Wing Coaster, opened at the park in 2013. It replaced Disaster Transport in the Sky Tower, and it became a new icon of Cedar Point because it flies over the front gate. You have to go under this coaster to enter the park. It's easily one of the coolest park entrances of all time. Now that being said, how good is this roller coaster? It gets mixed reactions, and so in this video I will be giving my full thoughts on it. Let's first start with the stats. Its height is 170 feet, that makes it one of the tallest wing coasters out there. I believe Wild Eagle is currently the tallest at over 200 feet. It has 164 drop, its maximum speed is 64 miles per hour, and it has 6 inversions. And it flies through over 4,000 feet of track in a 2 minute and 40 second ride time. This coaster is able to run with 3 trains, so its capacity is pretty good. And there are two sides of the station. In order to board this coaster, you choose left side or right side. And the ride experience definitely varies depending on where you are sitting on this coaster. That plays a major impact. If you sit in the back, you're going to be getting a more forceful ride. If you sit in the front, it's going to be pretty forceless, but you have a better view. So this is definitely a coaster that you're going to want to ride a couple of times. I like the more forceful rides, so for me, I prefer the back seats. And then once you decide if you're sitting in the front or the back, you have to decide, okay, which side is better, the right side or the left side? And do I want the outer seat or the inner seat? I personally prefer the inner seats with these coasters. And with Gatekeeper, I really don't have a preference of which side I like better. But if you do go to Cedar Point and this isn't your home park, I recommend you ride this coaster twice. Once on the right side, like front row, and then once on the back row, left side. Or vice versa, it really doesn't matter. I just think that you have to experience the front and the back and the left and the right. So let's talk about the ride experience. So when you start to go up the lift hill, you get this great view of the beach to your left. When you reach the coaster's maximum height, you're going to start to rotate slowly and flip under in this wing over drop. These wing over drops are fun. I really like them. Because when you flip under in that inversion, yes it does count as an inversion, it's really slow and it's a really cool way to drop. I much prefer the wing over drops to the regular drops that you have on like Wild Eagle. You're going to dive straight under yourself and go into an Immelman. Following that, you're going to go straight into this massive airtime hill. Airtime Hill is the name of the element, however, that being said, you do not get any airtime on this hill. I think you were supposed to, but it's pretty much the most pointless element on the entire coaster. I found it to be very dumb, and I think that they could have easily have put in another element and it would have been so much better. Following that, you're going to go into a corkscrew, and then immediately into the zero-g roll, which passes over the front gate, and that goes through two keyhole towers. This is by far the coolest part of the ride. If you're putting your hands up, you immediately tuck them in because you're afraid that they're going to hit the beams. You pull in your feet because you're afraid that you'll lose your feet on this ride. It's a really cool sensation. Of course, you're completely safe. They're able to do that because B&M has this specific ride envelope that they put over the coaster track and saying that you can put in a near miss helmet, but it can't go in this amount of space. And they do that so that if you're a taller rider, you won't be hitting anything, and that goes the same if you're a shorter rider. I love how you pass through the two elements, and then you're going to go straight into a dive loop. This is a fun inversion right there. And then you're going to go into an inline twist, and that passes through the keyholes again. It's not as much of a near miss as before, but depending on which side of the train you're on, it definitely qualifies as another near miss element. That's really the best part of this ride, the near miss elements. They're super cool. And I think that every wing coaster should have a near miss element. I feel like if a wing coaster doesn't have a near miss element, then it's kind of defeating the purpose of a wing coaster. Following the inline twist, you're going to go straight into a mid course brake run, followed by a helix. It's basically the worst ending ever for a wing coaster. Following the inline twist, you're going to go straight into a mid course brake run, and then a helix, and then the ride's over. It's really an anticlimactic ending. I think that they could have done a much better ending. But I guess Cedar Fair has this thing with ending out their coasters in a helix. They're doing the same thing with Val Raven, which is opening in 2016. But despite its lame ending, this is still a fun coaster. Is it the greatest? No, it's not. I think most coaster enthusiasts will argue that Thunderbird is the best B&M wing coaster. But I still like this one. I like the wing over drop. I like the near miss elements. Its layout is okay. I wouldn't have added the airtime hill. 
or that lame ending, but I still think that it's a good fit for Cedar Point. And so for its final score, I'm going to be giving it an 8. It has some bad parts, but it's still a good ride. If you go to Cedar Point, I definitely recommend that you ride it, but I would not recommend that you ride it immediately in the day unless you're at early entry, because this coaster is at the front of the park, a lot of the guests will go straight to it first, so that does cause some longer lines. So that's it for this coaster review, hope you enjoyed it, I want to hear about your thoughts on Gatekeeper at Cedar Point. Make sure to stay tuned for more coaster reviews.